Hi, I'm Jonathan Messenger, and welcome to The Alien Adventures of Finn Caspian. Bebop, before you can interrupt me, do you want to say hello to everybody? Bebop? Hey, everybody. Were you just waiting to interrupt? Yes. <laughs> okay, well, you're actually going to love this, Bebop, because we have a few listener emails here for you to answer. The first is from Lev, who wrote, Hey, Jonathan, this email is to Bebop, not you. Hey, Bebop, you should have a spoiler club for all the people who like spoilers. I don't know how I feel about that, but what do you think, Bebop? Jonathan, please cover your ears so I can speak directly to Lev. Lev, don't tell Jonahan over there, but I'm on it. Okay, Jonathan, you can come back now. Okay, great. Lev's sister Clara also wrote in asking when there were going to be more Bebop Tales episodes, which I can actually answer that one. In a couple of months after the Finn Caspian season wraps up, We'll have Bebop Tales Season 2, which I know you've been working hard on, Bebop. Jonathan, please cover your ears so I can speak directly to Clara. Clara, there may be a special Bebop Tales episode before that, but don't tell Hamathan over there. Okay, Jonathan, you can come back now. Okay, and finally, Henry from Berwyn, Illinois, asked that I not read this email and pass it directly to you. So, go ahead, Bebop. Jonathan, if you... I know, I know. Cover my ears. Okay, Henry says he wants to be part of Bebop's prank squad, which is obviously a great idea, and that I should turn Jonathan's milk a different color. A prank a leprechaun pulled on him and his brother last year. Okay, so we have Bebop's prank squad and Griffin and Bebop's spoiler club. All right, this is getting really fun. Okay, Jonathan, you can uncover your ears now. Great, great. We're done? Finally. Now, if you remember what happened in the last episode, Paige and her new friend, the small furry nutkin, had discovered a door with some sort of code written across the top. Now, a lot of you cracked that code, so the story can go on, and be sure to listen through to the end when we thank all of our code breakers. But for now, let's listen in to The Alien Adventures of Finn Caspian, Episode 7, What's for Lunch? Nutkin and Paige stared up at the words, Seek Thicket Rim. Paige sighed and sat down in front of the door. Ah, Seek Thicket Rim, Seek Thicket Rim, Seek Thicket Rim, she said. You think it might be a puzzle? I don't know, said Nutkin. I've stared at it every night, and I have no idea what it's supposed to mean. Okay, said Paige. Let's think about this. A thicket is a bunch of bushes or trees growing together, right? And the rim could mean the edge of the thicket. So if we can just find the thicket, maybe we can get out of here. Yeah, except we're indoors. And there aren't too many bushes in the hallway here. Ugh, said Paige. This is the kind of thing that my brother Finn is good at. Ugh, it's so annoying. There's no reason you can't be good at it, too. You climbed up a chimney, and you repelled my expert sneak attack. You're obviously good at this sort of thing. Paige smiled. She had spent the last month leading up to Finn's birthday and then watching the explorers go off and have all these adventures, feeling like she was too young, too small, too little to do all of the amazing things they had done. But then she'd stowed away on their pod and become an honorary sergeant and then sort of escaped from her prison cell. Maybe Nuckin was right. Maybe she, Paige, could do this just as easily as Finn and his friends did. All right, said Paige. So let's say it's a puzzle. It's not magic, right? Or at least it's not one of those puzzles where you say something three times and then the door magically opens. True, said Nutkin. You've said it like a thousand times so far. Times, said Paige. You know, if you move around the letters, you can actually spell the word times. Huh, you're right. And if you rearrange the other letters, you get the kicker. So the times kicker? That doesn't make any sense. The kicker times? The kicker times! That's it! The kicker times! It's like a karate newspaper! A karate newspaper? Said Paige. I guess, but I don't know how that helps us get out of here. But kick makes sense. 
Oh, I get it. Wait, what? What? Said Nutkin. Tell me, tell me, tell me. Paige stood up and smiled at Nutkin and... Kicked the door. The door creaked open and light from the hallway cast a dim glow into a black passageway. Kick three times, said Paige. It's not really that polite, but then again, neither is imprisoning us so you can get your dumb amulet back. That was awesome, said Nutkin. She jumped up and headbutted Paige's helmet. Ow, said Paige. This is a customary display of affection, said Nutkin. Okay, how about we just shake hands from now on? No way, it's headbutts all around. The two friends walked slowly into the dark passageway. They held hands as it grew darker and darker, and when the door behind them shut, it was pitch black. Paige let go of Nutkin's hand and put hers straight out in front of her. She felt around and touched a wall off to the left, and after a little while, she was surprised to reach up and touch a ceiling. It seemed like the tunnel was growing smaller and smaller, so narrow after a while that Nutkin was walking shoulder to shoulder with Paige. Where do you think we are? said Paige. I don't know, said Nutkin. The walls feel a little rocky. It reminds me of when I was taken by the guards, how they walked up and down through all these tunnels. Yes, exactly. Only those guards wouldn't fit in a tunnel this small. Who goes there? Who goes there? hissed a voice ahead of them. Paige couldn't quite locate it. If you want to get out of here, come to me. Nutkin began pulling on Paige's hand, walking to the voice. What are you doing? whispered Paige. Are you crazy? Don't listen to it. Well, what else are we going to do? said Nutkin. Run away? We can't see anything. Just, just wait a second, said Paige. No, don't wait. Hurry, come with me. There was something strange going on here. If this creature with the hissing voice could see in the dark, why wasn't it attacking them? Or at least surprising them in some way? And it sounded a little familiar. If you're so scary, said Paige, why don't you come and get us? No, you must come to me. Those are the rules. Come on now, there's no escape. Come here. Wait a second, that's what it was. It was a smell, the smell. She would know that awful smell anywhere. Wait a second, you're, you're one of the guards, aren't you? Said Paige. You can hide in the dark all you want, but you can't hide that stink. Hey, that's not nice. But then why are you just sitting there? Said Nutkin. The guard didn't say anything. <laughs> it's stuck, <laughs> said Paige. This tunnel is too small for you, isn't it? And you can't get up here. Um, no, that that's, that's definitely not it. Oh, and that's why you sound that way, <laughs> said Nutkin. You're all squeezed in. Huh. You almost had me for a second there. Nutkin grabbed Paige's hand and pulled her to the right. Come on. There has to be another way out of here that isn't clogged by one of those hairy guys. Wait, can you at least give me a push? Paige and Nutkin moved quickly in the tiny tunnel. They knew that if one guard had been sent to head them off, then the king must know they had escaped from their cells. But now that they knew the guards couldn't get into the tunnels, they felt a little freer to push forward. The tunnels seemed to go in every direction, but eventually, they came to a dead end. What do we do now? said Paige. Leave it to me, said Nutkin. And Paige heard Nutkin take a few steps back and then run forward yelling, Ha ha! And slam into the end of the tunnel. To Paige's surprise, the wall gave way and light poured into the tunnel. Nutkin fell straight down, something clattering around her. Paige peeked out from the edge of the tunnel and saw Nutkin on the floor and a picture frame that had, until two seconds before, been hanging on the wall, lay broken beside her. 
I'm okay, said Nutkin. Paige shimmied out of the tunnel and leapt down. You're okay for now, said Paige. She pointed to the broken frame, and inside was a picture of two of the guards and little Yeti kids, a family portrait. They had climbed out of the castle and into the guard housing. Okay, said Paige. Just be quiet, and maybe no one's home. Someone like me, you mean? Paige looked up to see one of the guards standing in the doorway. It was taller than any of the others that Paige had seen before, and somehow even hairier. It stepped forward and immediately filled up the room. Well, well, well. It's the little prisoners everyone's been looking for. I was just about to go out myself, but here you are, in my own living room. Wait, said Paige. Maybe you don't have to turn us in. Oh, and why is that? The king will make me chief guard for bringing in you two. The massive monster took a step closer. Paige didn't actually know what to say next, but she didn't like the way the monster was talking to her. As the youngest in her family, she knew when she was being talked down to, and she didn't like some big, hairy, smelly creature treating her like she was just a little kid. Nutkin didn't seem to like it either, because when Paige said, Um, because... Nutkin yelled, Because this! Ha ha ha! And she jumped up, grabbed a handful of the monster's hair, and tugged as hard as she could. Oh! The monster cried. That hurt! Paige looked at Nutkin. Run! The two of them dove between the monster's legs and threw the door out into the house's kitchen. Something was steaming in a pot over a fire, and the smell of it made Paige think the monster smelled like daisies in comparison. She spied a door that looked like it led outside, and she barged through it, Nutkin close behind her, and they stumbled out into the dark. It was still nighttime, despite all the time they'd spent in the tunnels. And now Paige and Nutkin were in the middle of a small village where the guards lived. They ran off the path and around a neighboring house just as the guard stepped out of its home, holding the part of its leg where Nutkin had pulled its hair. It let out an enormous howl. <laughs> Waking all of the guards in the village, torches lighting in all of the houses. You know, it's not really nice to pull hair, said Paige, looking down at Nutkin, who was holding a handful of the monster's fur. I know, said Nutkin. I may have anger issues. The two quietly and carefully found the edge of the village, a tall, sheer wall impossible to climb. They ducked low and walked along it, eventually finding there was no way out, except back through the castle. Paige and Nutkin crawled around a small hedge until they were by the castle entrance. When a sleepy-eyed guard turned in the other direction, the two made a break for the open doorway. Stop! Stop them! It was the guard whose hair Nutkin had pulled. It ran after them as they skipped into the castle. The two began running blindly through the various hallways, trying to find a way out. They came to a room where they found a guard, its head and arms stuck in a tunnel in the wall, its toes barely touching the ground. It was the one from earlier who had tried to trick them. Hello? Is somebody out there? Could you please pull me out? We'll get you out of there, said Paige. But then you have to agree to get us out of the castle. There was silence from the trapped guard. Finally, it spoke. I cannot betray my king. A one-time offer, buddy, said Nutkin. She reached up and pulled a handful of the guard's leg hair. <coughs> now or never, she said and grabbed another. <coughs> she looked at Paige and shrugged. Sorry. Okay, okay, okay. Just... Leave my hair alone, please. I'll get you out of the castle, but that's as far as I'll go. Okay, said Paige. She and Nutkin each wrapped their arms around the monster's legs and pulled. The monster fell back and Paige and Nutkin clattered to the floor. All right, everybody up, said Paige. Which way? Paige was surprised by the ease with which the guard led them through the castle. What had seemed like a maze to her was simple for the monster. It listened for the other guards and picked routes that kept them safe. And before they knew it, they were at the side door of the castle. That's it right there, said the guard. This is as far as I can take you. Please, please don't pull my hair anymore, it said, shrinking away from Nutkin. 
I need to get out of here before anyone sees me with you two. Paige looked out the window of the door, and her heart sank. There, waiting for them, was the king, a trumpet alien, and about 50 little aliens that looked just like the king and Nutkin, the same ones who had been there to cheer on the Olympics. Okay, well, at least there are no guards in sight, said Paige. They must all be in the castle looking for us still. She looked down at Nutkin, still holding the guard fur in her hands. I have an idea, she said, but you're going to have to trust me and you're just going to have to go with it, okay? Paige kicked open the door and walked proudly out, staring down at the king and his subjects. (coughs) Nice try, young ones, but you can't escape from us that easily. Stay back, said Paige or you'll get the same treatment as your guards did. Paige held up fistfuls of fur high in the air. The crowd shrieked in horror. (laughs) That's right, said Paige. On my planet, we eat little fur balls like you and your guards for breakfast. They were delicious. The king stammered. You you can't have. You don't mean you ate... I didn't know that you eaten. How is this? You couldn't have. Nutkin giggled beside Paige and then put on a frightened face. Oh, you should have seen it. She yelled. It was, it was horrifying. Horrible. That's right, said Paige. And I'm still hungry. And looking down at all of you, all I can see is a bunch of little lunches. The crowd screamed, and they all started running in every direction to get away. The king coughed and looked as if he might faint. Okay, said Paige. Let's get out of here before they remember that I'm vegetarian. Okay, I am here with my editor and son, Griffin Messenger. Say hi to everybody, Griff. Hi, hi. And what did you think of that episode? Pretty good. Yay! All right, pretty good. I'll take it. All right, so you had a couple of questions. Uh, fire away. I wonder why we still haven't heard from Voltronics. Yeah, I know. What happened to Voltronics? Well, part of the problem might be that we kind of maybe took a step back in time a little bit. So some of this stuff was happening while Finn and his friends were helping Graco, right? Right. So maybe Voltronix is just still on his way. Yep. So we'll find out. We'll find out sometime soon. I promise you that. Any other questions? Yeah. I wonder how Paige and Nutkin are going to get out. I mean, with all the hair pulling. <laughs> yeah, right. Those guards got to be kind of mad at them. Uh, what, do you have any ideas for how they're going to escape? Maybe Voltronix will turn up by then and he can fly him. Maybe. It's not always, it doesn't always work out when Voltronics tries to be a hero, but maybe it will this time. Yeah. <laughs> he ends up getting hurt or hurting someone. Yeah, right, right. Okay, so for this episode, we had the puzzle at the end of the last episode, and we got some code breakers in, some cryptographers. So I want to say thanks to Maurer from San Diego, California, Nahar from Arlington, Massachusetts, Fox from Bethlehem, Pennsylvania, Liam and Malcolm from Batavia, Illinois, Finn from Melbourne, Australia, Maya from Madison, Wisconsin, Toby from Evanston, Illinois, Matt from Dunville, Ontario, Canada, and that's it. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you guys all so much for solving that puzzle. Yep, thanks. And here, so let's talk about our art for the week. Okay, so for today's art, we have a drawing from Morgan, who drew a really cool picture of the Space Olympics with a little gum alien saying, Help, I'm stuck. <laughs> Then Ryan, who's eight, drew a great picture of Saffrite and the wild things. It's really awesome. Thank you so much for that, Ryan. Ace, who's five, from Wendell, North Carolina, drew Pandolf and Bebop and the dinosaur. It's a really funny drawing, so thanks for that, Ace. Pretty cool. Harper, from Acton, Massachusetts, drew a self-portrait with Bebop and a really neat drawing of the spider inside Saffrite with Vale firing an arrow. That's really cool. Thank you for that, Harper. Up next are brothers Wyatt and Jack. Wyatt is eight and Jack is five. And they drew some really cool drawings for us. And both of them drew pictures with snails in them. So I think that's maybe a not-so-subtle hint 
to get some space snails into the story here. So we'll work on that. Thank you, Wyatt and Jack. <laughs> yeah, and you're pretty big. Alex, who's seven from Black Mountain, North Carolina, drew some really cool aliens for us, including the five-headed alien bomb. And then Lauren, who's four from Boulder, Colorado, she drew a really awesome version of Saffrite. It's super colorful. Thank you, Lauren. And then Kayahi, who is nine from San Jose, California, drew a really, really cool picture of Bebop and then another one of a laser bunny. So lots of really awesome art. Thanks so much to all of our chefs for sending those in to Bebop. Thanks for all the people who listened and send in your art. Yeah, thanks. Thanks, buddy. Okay, and then up next and lastly is our... Jokies! Jokes. All right. So first up is from Bryson, who is five years old from Appleton, Wisconsin. What do you call alien bobblehead? Be Bob. <laughs> <laughs> be Bob. Uh, be Bobblehead. Maybe we should make Be Bobbleheads. That's a good idea. And then finally, we have Keith from Studio City, California. He's eight years old, and here is Keith's joke. Hello, my name is Keith, and I'm eight years old from Studio City, California. My joke is, what did Mars say to Venus? You look marvinous. Get it? Like marvelous. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I like that one, Keith. Thank you so much for sending that in. And I think that's it for today. It's in terms of our code breakers, artists, and joke tellers, our stand-up comedians. So anything else you want to talk about, Griff? Nope. Okay, uh, we're done recording for the day. What are we reading tonight? Beyond the Spiderweb Chronicles, the giant problem. The giant problem. All right. Thanks so much, Griff. And uh, I want to say goodbye to everybody. Bye, bye, bye. All right. Thanks, buddy. Bye, everybody. Okay, thanks for coming back and having more fun with us this week. And thanks to everyone who has sent in their art, their ideas, their jokes, their sounds. Sounds this week came from Sandris, whose sound was a door opening in the castle. And from Max and Dexter, whose bubble sounds was the pot cooking in the monster's kitchen. And shoutouts this week to Lauren, Kayahi, Alex, Jack, Wyatt, Ryan, Harker, Ace, and Morgan for the art and Bryson and Keith for the jokes. The Alien Adventures of Finn Caspian is a type drawer media production written and produced by Jonathan Messenger, edited and guided by Griffin Messenger with special thanks to Maria Villanueva. The theme music you hear at the beginning and end of every show is by Mark Greenberg, recently voted the nicest human in the Milky Way. For more information about the music, the art, everything about this show, check out the show notes. Thanks again for coming back and having fun with us, and we will see you next week. If you have any ideas for pranks I can pull on Jonathan, let me know. <laughs> <laughs>